In this video, I will provide you with a method or a few methods that might work for you if you have a foundation that is not square. So let's go ahead and get started by looking at a foundation that is square and that all of the edges are nice and straight. And then we will go ahead and deform the foundation by adding a little extra materials at this corner and this corner here. So again, this part of the foundation is square. The red area would be out of square. And let's go ahead and zoom in on that to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. And keep in mind that the anchor bolts have not been moved yet. Because if you have an out of square building foundation, there's a good chance that the anchor bolts might be moved over enough to where you won't be able to use the existing anchor bolts in the building foundation. And then chipping off the concrete later. But don't worry, you can always use epoxy anchor bolt systems. And I do have other videos on that. So if you are going to square up the foundation and it needs to be built with specific measurements, then you might end up with a situation like this here. If not, I'll provide you with a few things you might be able to do to make the foundation work and create a square building. So now that you have a pretty good idea what we're dealing with and the sections that are out of square, let's go ahead and remove the bottom framing sill plates because this is what we would be dealing with anyway. The foundation would look something like this. And the first thing I want you to do will be to create some type of a square or rectangle inside of the building perimeter so that we can measure the areas to find out what part of the building isn't square. And if it's possible, try to avoid odd numbers like this, especially with fractions, because it will be a lot easier if you can have some type of measurements that are in feet without any inches or fractions like we have in this example here. Next up, just to give you a idea of what we're still working with, let's go ahead and install the framing plates where they will create a 15 foot by 20 foot building and provide us with a good starting point for this project to fix everything. And another thing I want to point out is that you might be able to reposition your square or your rectangle by moving it a little bit in either direction if that's going to work a little better for your project. Now I went into extremes here and obviously this wouldn't be better for this project. However, by shifting your rectangle or your square just a little bit, it could make a big difference on your project as another way that might benefit you somehow when trying to square up a building. And next up, let's go ahead and take a look at a method that I believe might be the easiest way to position all of your wall framing plates. However, you could do this by simply measuring off of these lines if that makes sense or will work for you. And it might even make a little more sense once I walk you through this part of the project. So I'm going to take a framing plate or a couple of framing plates, whatever I need, to create the length of the walls I need for the exterior of the building. So here we're using a 20 foot long board or two 10 foot boards. And I can simply slide them over in different directions until I come up with the perfect measurement here, which in our case is going to be 10 and a 16th inches, leaving us with 7 eighths of an inch of the concrete footing sticking out past the wall on that side and practically nothing on this side. So the key here is to keep this measurement the same. And if I go over to the other side and I think that the wall framing plate needs to be moved over in this direction or moved over a little further this way, then I can readjust these measurements. Again though, the key is going to keep them within the boundaries of the square and not have one foot one and 15 sixteenths on this side and then go over to the other side and have one foot one and a half inches. The next thing we can do will be to mark the ends of the two by fours that we can use to snap a straight line or create a straight line that will end up representing the exterior of the wall framing. 
And don't worry about it if somehow you make a mistake and you need to move it over a little bit in either direction, you're going to be able to do that before you install the walls or even lay out the wall framing positions permanently. And here's an example of what the layout lines would look like. They're going to be the width of the wall framing plate and we're going to be able to see which anchor bolts aren't going to work or which ones won't work as well as the others. Let's go ahead and install the framing plate to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. And we can see where these three will work. This one here won't or won't work as well. The next step will be to find the layout or wall framing lines for the other walls. And we're simply going to do that in the same way. So no need to go through this process again. Just simply repeat what you did to position these walls over here. And again, if you move one of the framing plates a little bit, make sure that you move the other one so that you have the same distance between the line you're using in your square rectangle and the outside of the wall framing plates. They've got to be the same. And after you have created your straight lines, you can go ahead and install your wall framing plates and then chip off the rest of the concrete with a chipping hammer if needed to make the foundation work with any of the materials you're going to install on the perimeter like siding or stucco. However, if you're not interested in chipping the stucco and you can change the width and the length of the building, then you might be able to move the wall framing plate over. Here we simply moved it over an inch and it's going to be sticking off of the building foundation on this side to where we can add materials instead of removing them. It's going to be a lot easier to add some type of a concrete or cement mortar than it will be to remove it. But keep in mind that we're still having a problem with our anchor bolts that might require you to add additional anchor bolts. Another idea might be to just move it over a little bit to where you don't have to chip off as much of the building foundation. So if you remember in the previous example, we were chipping off an inch. In this example, we'd be chipping off about a half inch on this side and then adding about a half inch to the other side. But if you look here, it looks like all of the anchor bolts are going to work, providing us with something else that might work a little better. And my last suggestion in the video would be to use a wider framing plate like a two by six. So instead of having a two by four wall, we're going to use a two by six wall and keep the inside line the same and then have all of the anchor bolts work out of the wall framing sitting on top of the building foundation along any point of this particular wall to transfer the load to the building foundation. However, we will need to add a lot more material to the building foundation on this side, and that is if we need to. I've seen plenty of homes built like this where they don't do anything and simply let the wall framing plates hang over to create a square building on a building foundation that is not square. So that's about all I have on this subject at this time. Feel free to leave any questions you have in the comment area. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed watching the video and if you want to see more videos like these.